Hello crocheters and welcome to Christmas in July 2023. It's been a couple years since we've been able to do one of these so I'm really excited to be jumping back in. If you're new here my name is Valerie and I am a crochet amigurumi designer. My business is Old Soul Crochet Company LLC. So this is going to be a full tutorial for the Terry Sea Turtle pattern over on the Old Soul Crochet Along Facebook group. I put up a poll a couple months ago and it was definitely, Terry got the most votes of all of the others that were um, suggested or put up there for um, a crochet along. So that's what we're going to do. So it's going to be a full tutorial in three parts. Um, the first video is going to be about an hour long and it's going to cover the the shell and the belly so all of the parts that go into that the second video will be the head eyes nose and attaching to the body and then the last video will, will be legs and tail and attaching so stay tuned for those in the first video that i made announcing the christmas in july pattern um, i linked the materials so if you've already got those ready to go you can just go ahead and jump in to the tutorial here. If not, I will also link the materials down below this video so you can get those. Um, how the tutorial works, I will be teaching you the repeat for each of the rows and then after that I'll skip to the end of the row. So you'll need to have your pause button ready. Uh, but I figured that that would be, I don't know, less annoying than sitting there watching me crochet every single repeat. So once it's once I teach you, we'll just skip to the end of the row and we'll start the next row. So that's how that will work. Um, you'll also notice in this, this tutorial, I crochet in concentric circles rather than in a spiral. That's a personal preference. I like how it looks. I like how everything is like neat and orderly and I don't have the sort of like slightly ski wampus nature of the spiral. Um, but I had people who tested the pattern for me say they worked it in a spiral and it worked fine. So that's kind of up to you. Um, and I'll bring this up again later in the video because that's when I remembered to talk about it. And then I thought I better include that in the intro. So here we are. Um, but I think that is everything. So let's go ahead and get started. To get started on the Pentagon, we will be using our eight millimeter hook and our super bulky size six yarn. I'm using Bernat blanket yarn in the colorway Sonoma. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our magic ring. So we begin by holding our yarn like so, wrap it around so we have an X on this side and two parallel lines on the back side of our fingers. And then we will insert the hook underneath the first strand, pull the second strand under and then towards us, gently twisting, and then we'll go underneath that yarn right there and pull through. And that is how we make our magic ring. Inside the magic ring, we are going to single crochet 10. We'll insert like this and we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And 10. We'll pull our yarn tail tight, close the loop. And then this, for the majority of this project, we're going to be working it in um, concentric circles. So instead of going in a spiral and just on our next row, single crocheting in the, or working our next row right here in this stitch, we're going to take our hook out of the stitch it's in. We're going to go behind the next stitch, which happens to be the first stitch. Then we're going to put our loop of yarn back on that hook and pull it through. And what that does is it just makes a perfect circle 
um, instead of a spiral when we crochet. So our next row is increase single crochet and we'll do that five times. So we're going to work right into this stitch we just came out of and since we pulled the yarn from the back to the front we can do that without undoing our stitches. So we're going to increase like so and then single crochet. Increase single crochet. And we will repeat that pattern all the way around. And once again, we're going to close the loop by going through the back side of the first stitch, and pulling our working thread through that loop and we're ready for row three. Row three is going to be increase, and then single crochet two. So one and two. And we'll keep doing that around five times. Increase and single crochet one, single crochet two. And what um, we're working in multiples of five, and that's what's going to give us our pentagon shape. As we sort of stack these increasing stitches on top of each other, that will give us our corners. We'll go ahead and close this off. And we're going to, on our next row, switch to our color A yarn. For this version, I am using Bernat Blanket Yarn in the colorway Sea Foam. Might even be Bernat Baby Blanket. Yes, it is. Bernat Baby Blanket Yarn. So to switch colors when you're doing uh, the concentric circles, one of the easiest ways is to, with our, our loop here that's ready to go crochet into the next row, we'll actually just pull a loop through there and we'll pull this yarn end tight. And that effectively just changes color right in the back and it's not very noticeable. It's really quite nice. Um, and with in this row, what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch 20. But we're going to try and keep our slip stitches somewhat loose. Um, slip stitches have a tendency to be tight and, and for this to work the best, we're going to keep it just a little bit looser than what our uh, current gauge might be. Another thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our stitch markers and mark certain stitches as we go. So we'll mark the first stitch. Now that we've made it, we can mark it. So we need to mark the first and the fifth. So we've got one, two, three, oops, four, Next, we'll mark the ninth stitch. So we've got five, six, seven, Then we'll mark 
the 13th stitch, so we're 9, 10, 11, 12, oops, I'm trying to keep my gauge slightly loose so I drop my thread more often, 13, and we'll mark is the 17th stitch. So 14, 15, 16, 17, two for one there. And then we'll finish off our slip stitches. 18, 19, and 20. Go ahead and close the same way we have been. Like so. And then we'll pull the yarn through, cut it. You don't need a long yarn tail for this. And just pull that nice and tight. I'll go ahead and cut my other yarn. And this is what we have for our pentagon. So it kind of loses its corners, which is why we marked them. And uh, if, you, if it's easier for you to find your corners, if you just kind of give it a little bit of a pull, kind of in between those stitch markers, can help you see that there's, there's your pentagon. So you'll need to make four of these in total for the turtle shell. For the hexagon, we'll be using the same materials as we used on the pentagon. And the pattern is going to be very similar, simply um, worked in a multiple of six instead of a multiple of five, so that we end up with hexagon shapes. So we'll begin again with our magic ring. And we'll go ahead and start by single crocheting 12 into the ring. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'm running out of room on my loop at seven here already, so I'm going to just pull it a little bit tighter so I don't run out of room to crochet over my yarn tail. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, so we're going to pull the yarn tail all the way tight, closing up that circle. And we'll continue to work in concentric circles. One of the things I struggle with is sometimes getting that front, that very first loop in the stitch that I need. All right, here we go. So we've got our first row done and we're ready to work in or begin the second row. So just like on the pentagon, we're going to increase and then single crochet. And this time we're going to do it six times instead of five. So increase, single crochet, go ahead and 
close it and be in row three where we increase and single crochet two. And we'll repeat that six times. So another increase, single crochet two. Alrighty, let's go ahead and close off our loop, or close off our row like so. And once again on our fourth row, we'll be switching to our color A yarn which is sea foam and pull that tight and technically right now we could just cut our color B yarn that way it's not in the way and causing issues for us and then we'll slip stitch around remember to keep your slip stitches just a little bit loose And we're going to mark the corners again. So that'll be our stitch number one, then five. So one, two, three, four, five. Then we'll mark the ninth, so six, seven, eight, and nine. Then the thirteenth, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, then the 17th, 14, 15, 16, And then lastly, we'll mark the 21st stitch. So 18, 19, 20, 21. And we'll finish our slip stitches. Um, for a total of 24. So 22, 23, and 24. And we will finish off the row. Pull that through. Give that a pull. And then to make sure we can see all of our corners, we're just going to gen gently tug on our stitches that are marked. Like so. And for this pattern, you're going to make a total of three hexagons. To begin stitching the hexagon pieces together, we will start, we've got two hexagons here. We're actually going to um, put them right sides together and we're going to crochet, we're going to slip stitch the pairs of stitches together, one set. So we'll go from 
these two marked stitches to these two marked stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my yarn. I'm just going to kind of pull the stitch markers a little bit to the side so I can still fit my crochet hook through here. I'm going to pull my loop through like that. And then we're going to pull our yarn through. Um, I do like to actually pull the tail through as well, just here on the first one, because it helps to secure it. And I'll just pull all the way through. That way I don't have to worry about my, my end kind of coming undone there. So that's our first one. And then we'll go through the next stitch, or the next pair of stitches. And we're just going to slip stitch like so. And it really doesn't matter um, which side you start on, they're all the same. So it doesn't have any bearing on it necessarily. All right, once we've slipped, slip, slip stitch through the last one, we should have a total of slide five slip stitches. You really don't need uh, a long yarn tail there either. And then you can open it up like that, and you can see that is how these pieces are going to be joined. Um, there should be, you can kind of see it, it dips down into that. So that kind of gives us the shaping of the turtle shell. And then we're going to do that once again with our next hexagon piece. Doesn't matter if you go up here or down here, but once again, you're just going to put them together and following those same directions, you're going to slip stitch the pairs of stitches together. So I'll walk you through that one more time. Pull our yarn through. Do one stitch. <clears throat> Pull that yarn tail through and then slip stitch the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. It can be a little bit unwieldy with all of the stitch markers and whatnot, but we will pull them out in just a minute. All right, so that is what the center of our back is going to look like, or the, the shell of the turtle. And so next what you're going to do is you're going to repeat that same process with the hexagon or the pentagons um, but you're going to attach two along there and then another set along there and once you're done with that we'll meet back to assemble them all together to create the shell this video we are going to be creating the shell so we've got our two sets of pentagons and our set of hexagons here in the middle and we're going to just focus on attaching one side first and I mean then the other side will be doing the same thing. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be lining up and joining pairs of stitches. So I'm just going to kind of hold them to help it make sense. Um, but this bottom point down here is going to join to this part of this hexagon. This top point up here is going to be joining to that hexagon and then everything kind of down the middle is is just going to line up so we've got like this pair 
this pair, this pair, this pair, and this pair. So the middle joins do have three, but we, I'll show you how we're going to do that. So we'll start by putting the right sides together, just like we did when we were joining the individual pieces. And similarly to how we did the others, I'm gonna pull the two stitch markers to the side and I'm gonna insert my hook through those two. I'm using my um, color A yarn here. We'll pull a loop through. Then just as we did with the hexagons and pentagons, we'll pull through one stitch. I'm pulling through the tail to help secure it. And then we're going to start joining. So we're going to be slip stitching together. So in the next pair of stitches, we'll do a slip stitch. And honestly, I mean, I don't know that you guys need the full tutorial on this um, piece here, but I wanna show you specifically this sort of situation here and what we do about it. So in this situation, what we're going to do is we're going to do a slip stitch where we go through our uh, blue marked here, and then this first pink one, we'll do our slip stitch. And then we're gonna go back through that same blue stitch and into the next pink one and slip stitch. And once you have the middles uh, joined, you can go ahead and remove the stitch markers so that they're not causing you problems anymore. And then you just continue on your way. So there's not like, honestly, as long as you get the bottom point and the top point in the right spots, I don't know that there's really too much you have to be particular about when it comes to these middle stitches. But if you have all of your stitches marked, you should be able to get everything slip stitched together correctly and your stitch count should come out just perfect. I'm actually going to remove this one right now so it's a little easier for me to get in here and then so this was one of the sections where we had three so it's going to go back and be slip stitched in that green marked stitch again. And we'll continue on. All right, this is our last set of three. So go through there, go back through this. Now we've gotten the blue and the green done. So now we'll go through the green and the green. Slip stitch those together. Remove those. And finish up our stitches. can get a little bit messy, a little difficult to see where you're going, but that's what the stitch markers are for. All right, so this is our last pair. We'll go ahead and cut a short yarn tail, tie that off, and when we flip it to this side, you can see we're getting that nice um, 
turtle shell shaping going on here. And so once we get the other side on, which you'll do the exact same thing, follow the same process, you'll just sandwich it front sides together like that, and then attach just as we did the last row, or sorry, just as we, we did the last side. Um, once you get it on, you'll notice that it's that the shell starts to dome like this, and that is correct. I wanted to mention that because I've had people ask, like, is it supposed to do this? Yes, it is. That is according to the design. So go ahead and attach that on, and I'll see you back here in the next video where we'll be making the shell surround. Actually, before we go, um, here's what the shell looks like when it's all the way done. And I wanted to note that all of the stitch markers on the outside can be removed except for this um, top right pentagon right here. Um, if you are left-handed, you would you would leave this one on. But yeah, if you're if you're right-handed. Leave this one on, remove everything else because it will be used later. All right, um, so in this video, we're going to be making the shell surround, that sort of outer edge of the shell. And we're going to begin with our color A yarn and our eight millimeter hook. So we're gonna work in this stitch that we've marked here. And we're going to pull a loop of yarn from the front to the back so that we can make a slip stitch in this first stitch here. If we don't do that, it's impossible to slip stitch. So, it's a little difficult to slip stitch as is. There we go. So that's our first slip stitch. And so we're going to work our way all the way around. We're going to um, be slip stitching around the entire perimeter. And each hexagon is going to have 13 and each pentagon is going to have nine. So at the end we should have 62 stitches. Um, I wanted to specify that because sometimes when you get into the joins it can be difficult to tell like uh, do I have the right stitch count um, or like a join can feel like an extra stitch. So just try and make sure you get 13 slip stitches for this one and this one and nine for all of the others, right? So we've got one, technically a part of that stitch. So I guess we'll start here with counting one for our um, hexagon. So we've got one, two. Oh, and also keep your slip stitches slightly loose because we need to work through it in the next row. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. So that's our 13 slip stitches for that row. And I'm going to just go ahead and up count and make sure that I know where I'm going. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so that looks good. So we'll do nine in this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so you're just going to continue doing that all the way around and then you're going to close off and then we'll work on row two. So here we are at the end of the row. I'm gonna remove the stitch marker so I can close this off. like so, but I'm actually, because we, we do need this stitch marked later, so I'm gonna put it back in. I just needed to be able to crochet there for a second. <laughs> there we go. So we're roughly marked. So now we're going to be switching to our second row. And in our second row, we'll be using our color B, 
yarn. So we're just going to switch it, switch colors in the back here. Give that a pull so that it cinches down nicely. And we've effectively changed colors. And we're not going to be using our C yarn, sorry, not our C yarn, our A yarn, um, for the rest of this part. So we're going to go, go ahead and cut that. And then we'll do, um, for row two, it's really simple. It's half double crochet, 62. So we'll just, I mean, 62 was the stitch count for our last row. So just go ahead and work one, um, one half double crochet in each of those stitches and I'll meet you back here for row three. All right, so this is the end of row two. Go ahead and finish it off. You can see it's curling pretty substantially toward the front. So what we're going to do to mitigate that is we're going to flip our work to this side, or not pretty side, <laughs> and we're going to single crochet 62. So pretty simply just work one single crochet in all of the stitches. And you'll continue that, that all the way around. Um, but what this is going to help do is it's going to pull the edge down a bit. You can see already where I've crocheted, it's starting to pull that edge, you know, away from the shell instead of curling up toward it. So you'll continue doing that around and I'll see you at the end of the row for finishing off. All right, so here we are at the end. I'm gonna close off like we do on this project. Go ahead and cut a longer yarn tail somewhere between eight-ish and 10-ish inches. Um, we're not actually going to be weaving in at the moment, um, but later we will use this yarn tail once we get our belly attached here. And then the head on, we'll use this yarn tail to kind of tack the, um, the edges of the shell down around the neck. That way they don't curl back like that. So that's what that's for. So I'll see you in the next video where we attach the belly. To make the belly, we will start with our um, super bulky color A yarn and an eight millimeter hook. Row one will be magic ring. Like so, and then we'll single crochet nine into that ring. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Gotta get myself some more yarn. Eight and nine. Then when I'm making this project, I work it in concentric circles. That works better for me. I have had um, people who tested the pattern who did it in a spiral and they said that, that it worked fine. Um, but I know concentric circles works and I, I love the nice neat circles. So I'm gonna continue that. So close off and that is the end of row one. Row two is pretty simple. It's going to be increase nine. So we'll work an increasing stitch here into that first stitch and we'll just continue around doing increases in every single stitch 
for a total stitch count of 18 at the end. And here's the last stitch, our last increase. So you should have 18 stitches. Go ahead and close it again. And the next row is going to be the repeat will be single crochet one, like so, and then increase. And we'll continue that um, all the way around as well. Single crochet, increase for a total of 27 stitches. And here's our last repeat, single crochet, increase. <clears throat> Bringing us to that 27 stitches. Wow, I made that really tight. So we'll close that off. Like so, and we will begin row four. Row four, we're once again keeping with the simple, um, or the simple pattern of just increasing nine per row. So for this repeat, it's going to be single crochet two, one, and two, and then increase. And we'll continue that around. Single crochet one, single crochet two, and increase. So you do that all the way around until we have 36 stitches. Here's our last repeat. Got our two single crochets and our last increase. And we'll go ahead and finish off that row, closing it up. There we go. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but for me, this happens um, on my invisible slip stitch, I think is how the, the creator of the stitch refers to it. I sometimes get like a raised stitch here. I know other people, they actually get like an overly tight stitch. Um, and so sometimes you just need to to get rid of that, you just gotta pull a little bit, be aware of that, and you see that one pulled right down? I mean, these ones I forgot to, so they're still there, but I mean, it's not a big deal, but if, if you notice it and you think, hey, why does my crocheting not look the same right there? You can just edit it that way. All right, so for row five, it's not quite the same. We're not continuing the same repeat. So I'll walk you through it here. The first thing we're going to do is sing. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, and ten. And then we're going to do a repeat of half double crochet increase and then a half double crochet. And we'll do that four times. So wrap our yarn around our hook, insert here, half double crochet increase. So we'll work two into that stitch and then a half double crochet. So that's our first repeat. Half double crochet, increase again. 
and a normal half double crochet. Second repeat. That's the increase, standard half double crochet, and last repeat. increase and half double crochet. So that is actually the the full repeat. So what we're going to be doing once again we'll repeat those those stitches all the way around. So now we begin our single crochet 10 and then we'll do our half double crochets. So at the end of this row we should have 44 stitches and what this row did is it starts to give us that elongated shape so we're not working in perfect circles anymore we're getting a little bit longer here to match the shape of this shell so go ahead and close this row off and sometimes as I was saying like people do have kind of a like a harder stitch row maybe a tighter stitch row and that's actually going to be this one um, that you crochet into so you can just sort of like stretch this stitch up a little bit if it helps it I guess you're you're crocheting to kind of keep the same gauge so that everything looks correct there we go all right so last row <clears throat> row six we're going to half double crochet three then half double crochet increase and we'll actually do that 11 times. So I'll walk you through that repeat here. So we've got one half double crochet, two, and then three. And then we've got our half double crochet increase. Just like that. So that's the repeat that we'll be doing all the way around and at the end we'll have a total of 55 stitches. I'll go ahead and close it off as well. And then it's important to note that we do not cut or tie off. Yes, this is the end of um, making the belly, but we're going to use our yarn that is attached to the ball to actually crochet it onto the shell and start really making our sea turtle come to life. So to begin sewing the belly to the shell, we're going to place them on top of each other like this. You're going to want the um, more oblong shape of the belly being vertical and matching up with the horizontal sorry not the horizontal the hexagonal uh, line down the middle so we'll be crocheting in approximately the third stitch away from this marked stitch because that's about where they line up um, if you're crocheting twists a little more you might want to go in the fourth um, or a little less maybe the second but for me the third works just it's just about correct. So we'll stitch in here, then go one, two, three. And single crochet like so. So we're going what we're going to be doing is just single crocheting um, almost all the way around. It can be a little bit tricky kind of finding your stitches because we're not working into a normal row per se. We're kind of working into the, um, the slip stitch row made from um, when we were making the shell surround. So it can be a little bit tricky, um, but on this you, you really don't have to be like perfect. Like stitch count is not the, um, most important thing what the I guess the most important thing is to try and get it so that your shape lines up pretty well 
like vertically. Um, so as you go around, if you feel like, I mean, I would, I would definitely finish out, you know, doing 45 stitches before I said, oh, this isn't quite working. Um, because the belly is smaller than the shell. And so it looks like it's not going to work until you get almost to the end. You're like, oh, hey, look, it is working. Um, but I, I just want you guys to know that like, if, if it's a little bit tricky here, I know sometimes the perfectionist in us can be like, wait, am I sure I'm doing this right? You don't have to worry so much this time. Just, just do what you can do, what feels about right. And you should, um, and when we get to 45 stitches, we should be ending up about right here. That should be our ending spot. And we'll, we should have about seven stitches available to sew. Well, no, I think we should have 10. So like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it'll, it'll skew over a little bit. Um, so go ahead and continue crocheting and I will meet you after 45 stitches. So here we are after 45 stitches. Um, if you ended up crocheting in like the fourth one, you probably need to do 46 stitches. So, you know, adjust accordingly. Um, and now here we're going to single crochet seven across the opening here. So we're not joining them together anymore. We're just working across the belly here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then in the next stitches, we're going to keep um, crocheting them together. So we're going to work into our next stitch and the marked stitch. So I'm going to remove that stitch marker so it's a little easier for me. And we're going to crochet those together. And then the remaining pairs of stitches. So we've got two more pairs of stitches. We've got... Do, do, do. One here and another here. And that is the end of that. Actually, I totally forgot. <laughs> totally forgot that we need to add the stuffing. And I totally prepped myself and once again totally forgot. So, either we can try and just do this as it is. Or we can pull it out and stuff it when we were supposed to. We were supposed to stuff it back here before we single crochet across the belly. So let me tell you what I'm going to use. So I have got the kind of the torso piece of a nylon. I have both of the legs knotted off and then turned inside the project. That way I don't have like, oh, I've got a little bit here. That way I don't have like these knots, you know, potentially sticking out. Um, so they're just flipped into the project and I like the torso piece for, for this. That way I know I've got plenty of room to just, you know, stuff. I don't have to worry about the nylon constricting anything. So I can pull out copious amounts of fiber fill and mine, <sighs> mine is a little bit dirty because my son thinks that it's super soft. Well, it is super soft, but he really likes to like play with it. So I end up with fiber fill all over my office anyway. And also in the grass, as you can see. So anyway, we're going to lightly stuff this with some fiber fill, not too much because we want to be able to get it down in here. And this would have been easier if I had done it at the right time before I finished doing these stitches. So you can be good and you can <laughs> go back and do that. Sometimes I just forget, you know, I get in a groove and I forget to, to reference the pattern because I definitely don't remember everything that I do in these things. So once you've got it in there, you just keep stuffing. You want to make sure that you're uh, 
um, allowing it to have that sort of oblong shape. Um, yeah, as you fill it in, make sure you work the stuffing into all of the corners. It's nice and evenly stuffed. You don't want to overfill it, but you also want to make sure that it, that it is worked into all of the areas so that it holds its shape. Because fiber fill will start to kind of collapse a bit over time. So you want it to have the best shape for the longest time that you've got it. All right, so once it's stuffed, you can um, finish off your row here. See, we finish that. We'll pull that tight and then we'll just weave in the ends. We'll just bury it in the project. There we go. So that is what the belly is going to look like. After this, we'll be adding the head. We'll be sewing it on. So once you have it good and stuffed, you can go ahead and tie it off. I think it feels pretty good throughout the body, except I need a, just a smidge more up here at the neck so that I've got something to join to. And since I'm, I've got the torso piece here, it's a little bit thicker trying to tie it off. We'll secure it and then next when we attach the head it's going to sit in this area and we'll kind of fill in any gaps that we might have there. So I'll see you in the next video.